What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. Uh, I am Matt Johnson, of course, and I have my esteemed colleague, the uh, what some are calling the professor, but of course not me. I call him the junior grandmaster himself. He's in the co-pilot seat, as always. Greg McDaniel. Greg, what's up today? Matt, what up, buddy? Hey, man, it is. we are so freaking blessed to have the most amazing, amazing listeners and followers of our show, man. I am blessed to talk with different people on a nightly basis. And Matt, last night, <clears throat> I was doing my call. Um, and uh, yes, with the young lady I was speaking with, we were exchanging cat stories because she has cats and I have cats. And I'm sitting there, if I could just record this and send this to Matt, epically destroy his evening. But uh, of course, we do not record those calls. And so it, just, it wouldn't, it, it would never only epically day. destroy my evening if you were somehow able to fly here, strap me into a chair, and like <laughs> duct tape my ears open. Like, I, I, Matt, that's really the only way that that audio recording would, would screw up my life. I am going to send you cat videos for the rest of the day for that comment. But, um, dude, I had I talked to I got a call from Brett today. He's a listener that um, did the McDaniel Challenge a couple of months ago. Dude, he's super cool, bro. He put all he did everything he, that we talked about that, to do, and he has now got hired on with the number one team in Salem. He's going to be about ready to land running. He's been reading all the books. He's prepped. He's ready to rock and roll. Uh, so he's pumped. I'm really good, good to see you, my friend. Glad I got the time to talk to to you. And then of course PSL. To all you PSL viewers right now, Prime Seller leads, you guys, you know what? We are working with Prime Seller. We are doing their, we're training their sales and customer service, you know, people. And you guys, one session with them, one session with me and Matt, and they set six appointments in one day after using our scripts and techniques. And so we are broadcasting into their group. So welcome all you crazy fools. You are now gonna be dosed with the uncensored. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yes. It's, a, it's an epic or, or a horrible day in your world. I don't quite know which because you're about to hit with big hit hit with a dose of Greg Uncensored. So, all right. And funny enough, uh, Aaron it interrupted my live feed that I was monitoring here because Aaron Wittenstein is calling me, even though he apparently now is on watching us live. Maybe that's why he understands why I don't pick the phone. But I'm going to pull a question from Aaron's Facebook group. This is the Lead Gen Scription Objections group. And the call, the question is from Philip. This is really good, Greg. I, I, this caught my eye because it's it's what I would call a smart person objection. Some people, some Ooh. objections, you know, are dumb objections because yes. they're objections of an uninformed person that doesn't understand the market. Yeah. They don't understand the way the business works, whatever. This is a smart objection. I think this is a valid objection. Um, so I'm I'm curious to see how you would handle it. So he says, what are some responses when you're speaking to a seller? And they say, sure, the market's hot and I can get top dollar, but that means I'm going to have to pay top dollar. Because this is a, and just a little background on the seller, they are a move up from uh, they want to sell at 400 and they want to buy it at 600. So how do you respond to that when someone's concerned about making a move in a hot market where they have a home to sell? It's gonna that that might sell at top dollar, but then they're gonna have to turn around and buy in the exact same market. So Matt, Julie, your three obese little wood denting babies, insulin sucking little creatures, large creatures. They are they are yetis, you know, wandering wow. aimlessly through the house, all hairy because they we don't know what they came from. <laughs> they were test they were, they were diabetic and hairy. All right, keep, and, and they're they're test two babies. We don't know what the, what was mixed up in that, but oh. we do know the fact. Um, so, well, what we say. so this is the, okay. All all bullshit aside, this is what we refer to as the elevator speech. I got the nose pinch at four minutes. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm already pinching my nose because of you. <laughs> So here's the response, you know, the, the elevator pitch that, um, you know, that I, I I'm going to give you guys. So we're going to have a conversation. So Matt, Julie, you know, I under, I know that you understand that we're near the high of the market, and I know that you guys are making this move because you guys have made a decision that at this time you've decided that this is the right, the right thing for you to do. And yes, real estate is a long-term hold asset. It's not a buy and sell for the most part when you're in this type of a market. Would you agree? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so then you're also going to agree with me that we're, we're homes are like elevators, okay? Mm -hmm. We've ridden this home up to the highest level it can go. Would you agree with me? It's not going to go here, but it's probably going to stay about here on value, right? Sure, I think so. So what you're going to do is you're going to get, since we've ridden that elevator up to here, we're going to exit the elevator. We're going to jump into the next elevator here that will take us up to that next level of equity growth and, you know, in, in the size of the home and the type of neighborhoods that you're going to be moving into. So if you plan on staying in this home, you know, for a long period of time, or at least for five to 10 years, then riding this next elevator up to the next plateau is a better move for you than staying here because you will make more money as you move up to here. 
And as when people understand that, it's like going to the Empire State Building. The Empire State Building has multiple tiered elevators. You're not one, they're gonna take you all over the top, right? One take you to like 67 floor, get off on that one, go to the 90th floor, whatever the numbers are. But that's the same kind of analogy that you would use when it comes to explaining people, you know, to, to you know, for selling in a high market and have, ha having to pay a higher premium. But you also have to go back to them and originally ask them and say, hey, look, are you sure you wanna do this right now? Is this the right time for you to make a sale, you know, or do you wanna wait for the market to settle down? And if th at that point, it's going to be their decision on what to do. As long as they are fully aware of their decision, move forward with them if it's the right move for them. And if it's not, advise to that other side as well. So yeah, I like that. That's a very good. Uh, it's a very good visual analogy. I think people understand that. If you're if you're smart, you might also understand that in absolute terms, you might still you're still buying at the top or near the top of the market. Like whatever market you're selling out of, you're buying into as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I would make if you if it was going laterally. Um, if it was a little bit more lateral or, or if they were downsizing or something like that, I might make the point that, listen, that's that's why you hire someone like me. My job is to position you to get the highest and best out of this property, but then on the buy side, my job is to then negotiate and put you in a position to get that next home for lower and for better terms than another agent or you'd get by yourself. So even if you're even if you're buying at the exact same level, I should be able to sell your home for more and go help you buy a home for less because in every transaction there's what would you say two to three percent of the price of the home is kind of in swing depending on the skill of the agent. Of course, it's all about the relationship you have with the other agent. It has to do with your negotiations, the way to read the market. I mean, I talked to uh, Jamil. What up, Jamil? Dude, he's got the Century 21 franchise for Dublin, so he's gonna he's he's super pumped and um. He's been a fan of, the show, fan of the show for a while. But, I, I mean, I was talking to him about a property he has. He's like, dude, you know what? Hey, I'll wait for you, man. Just if you got something, bring it in, man. I'll, I'll totally wait for you. It's because we have a good working relationship. What? Are you nodding your head? <laughs> because Ronnie is doing, well, two things. Number one, he's calling us by our full Christian names, Gregory and Matthew. Uh, oh and God. he's doing that thing where he's doing the heart like, heart like, heart like. So he's got, yeah. So, guys, if you see like a whole <laughs> bunch of likes and hearts, uh, that is, the, we'll, we'll just dub it the Ronnie Phillip. Um, so guys, if you want to get attention, uh, go onto somebody's live feed and just sit there and that's right. Oh, God bless you, Ronnie. Thank you so much. We hope that we can repay the support. But uh, yeah, I, I like that. So anyway, back to you, Greg, on the because uh, I interrupted you. Yes, that's how it should go, Matt. Always back to me. You know this, man. Um, <laughs> Hey, uh, real quick, guys, go and follow me on Facebook. Uh, I want to make sure that you guys, we get that in there. Go follow me on Facebook. I'm out of friends. Matt is, doesn't like friends, so you can only follow him. He will reject your friend request. He's that type of guy. But I just can't take any more friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but it's true. I do. I, I don't them. Oh, oh my God, so funny. Yeah. Um, but I also had an opportunity to, you know, are we done with that question? Are we? I thought we got that I'm one answered pretty well. I'm, I'm moving on. Moving on. Hold on. I want to. We got to do. What, what, I'm going to ask a question now, Johnson. Oh. So Brad Hay, what up, player? You're watching live. He is from Manteca. He was from Pleasanton. He's a uh, three month into the business, little downtrodden to the fact that uh, you know the new deals aren't quite going his way. So I thought I'd bring this out to the forum, and I want you guys to read the, to to react to this, give your point of view, reach out to him, you know, reach out to Brad and kind of give him you know some some thumbs up, some likes, some haze, some uh, answers to questions. If you've been in the business for a while, so some of these questions that we're going to cover, we have three questions, Matt. Three. Okay. Then you okay. can do whatever you want. Then I'm going to shut the fuck up. Okay. Face, let's do, let's talk about Facebook pages. Now, okay. should you use, Matt, so this is role to reverse. I'm going to do the question. You're going to do the answering. Huh. So, <laughs> Man, I like this much better. This is, <laughs> hang on, let me brace myself. This is a refreshing <laughs> change of pace. I'm excited. Hang on, let me, I'm going to button my coat for this. <laughs> You're going to put your stretchy pants on. Real get comfy. All yeah, right. That's right. So Matt, would you use you know your business Facebook page or your personal Facebook page? Should you use both or just do one? What say you, good sir? Uh, for a company, I see the value in both. For an individual agent, I see zero value in having a Facebook page. I completely agree with you. For the first time, Matt, in yeah. our two plus years of relationship and building of this business together, I agree with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for the for the first time in two. <laughs> First time. We agree. We agree on lots of things, but here's We're the deal, guys. So, so a couple of years ago, I don't know how long it's been, but but within the last year or two, Facebook changed their algorithm so that page likes on a Facebook page, those people that you think are seeing your posts are really maybe you know one to five percent of those people are seeing your posts. So if you post something to a Facebook page of yours that has like a thousand likes on it, maybe what is that ten? 
somewhere between 10, 20, or 30 people are maybe seeing it. What Facebook is looking for is when they show it to those 10 or 20 or 40 people or whatever it is, they're looking to see like how, how that post does and, and how those people respond to it. And then if people do respond to that particular post, Facebook will come back to you and say, hey, would you like to boost this for five bucks or 10 bucks? And, and they're looking for you to spend money. So effectively they said, hey, you know, all of our users are getting really tired of all this business crap that's on their newsfeed. They're not interacting with it. We need to shut this down and that's the problem. So here's, here's the strategy. Um, do everything through your, first, your personal Facebook profile, make it a mix of personal content along with some business content, be yourself, do what Greg does, just do what you do, document your life. Um, real estate's a part of it, your other hobbies and stuff like that are a part of it. Um, and then if you really wanna get specific, have a Facebook group. That's mm -hmm. actually what I've been researching a lot lately for a project I'm doing with uh, Mike Lafito, who's been a guest on the show. And then I also um, help him with the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. So he's looking at launching groups. I've been doing a lot of research and thinking about that group and what that can look like. Mm -hmm. And, dude, Facebook groups are ridiculously good right now. So they are. Yeah, they it's, are. Just, it's powerful. It's basically what page, It's basically what Facebook pages like used to be. Now that now the groups have the power because you actually people that are in the group actually see the notifications when you post something, they can interact with each other. So it kind of keeps it going without you always having to be involved in every single interaction. It's really mm -hmm. just a matter of figuring out, you know, what's a good topic um, uh, for your Facebook group and then get it rolling. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. Also, if you really want to get, Brad, if you want to get the most reaction and interaction, do Facebook Lives. If you feel you have a face for radio, don't you have to get over that fact. I mean, in all honesty, people know, like, and trust you already. So expose yourself in the most non-weird sexual way ever. <laughs> When I say that, um, <laughs> expose yourself out to the market. I just see a like a like a tan trench uh, coat. Uh, yeah, um, I was envisioning a a, a bathroom, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it's even creepier. <laughs> I think so yeah, I think it's something from Dumb and Dumber. I'm picturing Jeff Daniels in like a like a you know horrible horrible bathroom. <laughs> but yeah, expose uh, yourself. Out okay. free. So they mentioned it's there was three where questions. People, it's where people get served up, you'll get served up faster to the hot top of the news feeds when you do Facebook Lives. If you, Brad, mm -hmm. if you want to get information to do on Facebook Lives, go to realtytimes.com. I will post that in for you guys um, right now. We can go get articles. I've talked about this uh, thing a lot, but it's a really good place to go. And I'm going to drop that in right now for you. Bing, bang, boom, done. It's in there now. So that is question one. Matt, door knocking. Okay. What to bring besides a business card, sir? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're gonna, you're actually you're literally going to throw this to me. Yes, of course I'm bringing it to you. Um, I would bring information on the neighborhood, community events, or I would door knock around an open house, a new listing, or something like that. So I would bring information related to the specific, definite purpose with which I am door knocking. And if I'm just out farming, then I would bring it uh, bring it down to the latest information. And hopefully, if you're door knocking, what you're I think Greg, the, there's a couple of goals in door knocking. It's number one to build your database. So you're always looking to collect emails. But the other thing is to keep an eye out for what's going on in the neighborhood and and kind of have this semi list that you have of off market properties, people that are open to selling if they yeah. got the right price. And you want to keep right. all, all, you know stockpiling that list. Um, I know a guy that in the Silicon Valley that. Uh, keeps a, a literal list, like it's in Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever, and it's always hovering around 100 properties of, uh, so literally he can tell people, like buyers when they come into the team, because he can literally say, look, I have an actual secret MLS, uh, and it's not, Greg, what you're thinking of, uh, <laughs> is, uh, that private joke, but anyway, uh, it is literally a list. It is a list of homes that he knows of that are semi ready to sell or they would sell if they got the right price and he keeps a running list of that. So that's another reason for you to be door knocking is to have those conversations and keep that list of people uh, so that when you get those, um, so that's something else of value you can be stockpiling when you're door knocking for your buyers. And then you go out back out to the neighborhoods with definite buyer needs, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a nice little, you know, it's like this, like a, it's like a dominate your neighborhood type of plan. It's a nice virtual cycle, mm -hmm. uh, virtuous cycle, I should say, as long as you're like, Greg, you've talked about this before, like how, how big your farm area is, as long as it's big enough, that virtuous cycle. And if you have a couple of different tiers, mm -hmm. so it's not all in the same price group, um, then it kind of reinforces itself nicely. It really does. And the most important thing, Brad, to remember is, you know, everything that Matt just said actually makes 100% sense. We, but make sure that you bring something, you know, I, I don't have it. I just literally threw the sheets away yesterday. I had a big old stack of them right next to me. You can go to neighborhood, you can go to neighborhood scout 
And you can go to the oh shit, what part of the, the damn site is it that can do this? I'll show this to you guys. Uh, are we talking about home? Let's do, let's do home snap, and then neighborhood scout. So here's home snap. I'll show you guys, Matt. We're gonna do something we have not done here for a while. All of y'all that are watching this live on Facebook, you're gonna see a screenshot. <gasps> I know. We never do screen shares. Know, it's too powerpointy for us. I know. It sounds yes, nice. that that is a word that I just made up. Powerpointy. 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 Mm -hmm. So guys, here's here's Home Snap. I went to my zip code nine four five two six here, and I entered it in. And then you're gonna come over here to Market Guide on the bot on the top left. Click on Market Guide. It's gonna give you a nice little two paragraph little report. It's gonna give you a little bit of a blurb on what's going on in the marketplace. You can literally do this. You can go up here, screenshot said area, take that. Obviously, this is a rough cut. Take that and put it on a on a Word document. Um, whoops, I'm not actually going to screenshot this. <laughs> oh, wait, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I am. Um, but you can go down here. These are all homes, detached homes, town homes, condos. Mm -hmm. Condos are up 200% total listings. Town homes are down 11%. And regular homes are 24.2%. So this is just really good, easy information um, that you guys can go and you know screenshot and put on the back of a document or a Word doc. And then the other side, you know, just do something as easy as, thinking of selling your home or do something like the go for no script. I bet you're not thinking of selling your home. Call me, Greg McDaniel, you know, have fun with it, play with it. Use both sides of the sheet guys. Cause this side is 50% of your total real estate that you have to offer out there, have information out there. You can put maybe a coupon from a re local restaurant or a shop on the back as a value add as a talking point, as a thank you for pe for people taking their time to talk to your ass as you know, you're sweating like a stuck pig when you're walking up to their door in the summertime, which I've done. It sucks. If they're nice, they bring you in and give you cold water. Those are the nice people. We like those people. Hello, I'm Matt. <sighs> oh, <I> like <laughs> It's still true. Just that was sweat pouring, pouring like a sieve. All right. Oh. So let's take a couple of these questions that uh, people have put up in the meantime, and then I want to come back to Brad's third question. Okay. So first of all, Adam Wallace asks, when doing Facebook Lives, does responding to comments get your video pushed higher? Yes. I would, I would absolutely yes. venture to say yes. So. Yes, it is because it's interaction. And the more that you ask and request for either emojis like the hearts and loves or angry faces or whatever else, which I'm starting to do to get re to understand mm -hmm. where people are going on the, which on the you guys should calls. do right now. Yes. Just hearts, hearts and emojis right now, everybody. No, no angry faces, assholes. Um, <laughs> unless you unless, unless they have Matt right now. Oh, Matt, angry face, Matt, angry face. Oh, that's um, funny. But uh, you know what? You encourage people on live interviews or live Facebook to say, hey, guys, bring me your questions. Let me know what's going on. I want to hear points and your thoughts and everything else. Because the more interaction that you get, the more valuable it is. The algorithm yeah. on Facebook is looking for three things, and they're very simple. One, it needs to be educational. Two, it needs to be entertaining. Three, this is the current, uh, current the top, Facebook Live. But these are the two real points here, educational and, and entertaining, because that's bringing value to the viewers. You're not just sitting there and just staring at the camera like this. Is it on? I think it's on. Oh my God, it's on. It's, it's looking at me. Why don't you look so Oh else? man. Uh, so yeah, oh, get, get the get 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 the reactions going. Absolutely. Okay. All right. And then uh, I just want to quickly comment on this uh, from Chase. As a friend of mine was penalized by his broker for cursing in his live video. Uh, he said the S word on his personal page. What do y'all think about it? Here's what I think. Fuck that broker. Greg, Fuck what that do you broker. think? That's Fuck right. that broker. Fuck that broker twice. Yep. That the bottom line is that you you attract who you are, and if that's who you are, um, then that's who you're going to attract. And guess what? Those people need real estate too. Um, well, Stefan is a great example. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he's he's listening. He's a former you know guitarist and bass player, and has toured with uh, with Dee Dee Ramone and all these guys. Uh, you know, so if you're if you're a tattooed former rock and roll you know touring musician. Fun. I, you think you're, the people that are drawn to you that want to sell real estate with you are going to care whether you use the F or the S word in one of your live videos? Absolutely not. And yes, Stefan, we are talking about you. Mm -hmm, that's oh, right. Dude, Matt, that is not out, the dude. subject of the question, but yes. Pick it out. So what? Stefan you know, gave me a bottle, a very nice bottle. He sent it up to me okay. uh, from Paso, Paso Robles, where he is out of. So if you guys are in Paso Robles, you need an agent. Super classy dude. Awesome guy. Yes, he's got tattoos. Who gives a fuck? That's you right. know what? My, even, even, my, even my grandpa who's 95 years old, was cool with me saying this stuff. He doesn't like it, but, you know, yeah. he, he understands that we appeal to a different marketplace. And that's okay. That's right. we're, not, we're, we're not your father's podcast. If you want boring and cardboard, we can recommend a few other podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> that's right.
<laughs> All right. Now let's get to this question from uh, from Donna, who was on my Facebook Live earlier today with Greg Harrelson. Nice. Uh, she said, do you like door knocking or circle prospecting better, Greg? That's a double-edged sword. Uh, and interesting to, to answer that. The reason why is this. I like them both. I got started in door knocking, and it gives you the ability to do a couple of things, either if you're restarting or just starting in the business. One, you're going to get to know the marketplace in depth. Like, the different houses, the people, you're going to have a nice conversations. You're going to work. You're going to get some of those you know, pesky holiday pounds that are still clinging on like a sticky booger to your finger. They just won't go away. Um, I know. I just images I wanted to paint in their brains. Like, it's, very, it's very vivid, Greg. Thank you. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Matt. Um, but, you know, I would, I would walk the neighborhoods, get to know the neighborhoods. I tell a story. I've told it before. You know, years, God, 18 years. Let's say it's uh, 16 years ago, right? Okay. If I had a kid then, they would be driving. How weird. But, you know what? The thing is, is that um, <laughs> I just see you that was, Wow, that was a random aside. <laughs> wow, I if I had a kid then, they'd be driving by now. But you weren't <laughs> having kids. You were out door knocking. So, back in story. Not. So, stop growling me, Matt. I need to. I need my freedom. Um, so I saw. Uh, I dude, Donna says I don't need to know the neighborhoods. Been selling for 19 years. Greg, you agent of 18 years, what have you to say about that? Donna, I'm in the middle of a story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is this is the point is, and this for all the agents who are not done it for 19 years, Donna. Uh, is that I, when I was out door knocking, I ran across a lady and she was coming through an open house and I had knocked on her door. She lived on a street called Via Don Jose. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know you. You live at 123 Via Don Jose. You have red, big giant redwood trees. Your husband drives a motorcycle. You just got a brand new minivan and you just had your third kid. Hi. Chick like did the backup walk. Like, oh shit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a stalker. I'm just a door knocker. It gets you out and it, it gets you belly to belly, face to face. Look, this business is belly to belly, face to face. And that's that's where the rapport is built, right? We can pick up this handy dandy thing, you know, it's called a phone, and you can make contacts. Correct. So door knocking is getting deep in there like an Alabama tick and really embedding yourself into the neighborhoods. Phone is for convenience and speed. The phone, you can, I can pile through 150 phone calls an hour, 200 phone calls an hour. That's speed. That's efficiency. But if you want to get deep relationships, you're going to be doing some doors. So it's a do a little bit of both. See what you like better. See what days and times you like to do it. But they are both phenomenal opportunities. And the phone numbers, guys. They're going away by 13% every year. They're getting eliminated. They're not being used. Landlines are going away. These things are growing in pop, 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 popularity. And so I don't know where the actual cold calling is going to be in years to come. Yeah, I think it's going to be, I, I personally think it's going to go more towards a prospecting will shift to where it's more active relationship building using social media first to reach out to people softly because that's the way people want to be reached out to, um, mm -hmm. building your personal brand and then getting that into an ex like an exploratory quick phone call. You know, mm -hmm. like it, it basically just, it's not that the phone calls will ever be eliminated because th they won't, neither will the in-person meetings. But I think it just adds another preliminary step where it used to be just in the 70s and 80s, you pick up the phone and you call and you get business. Yep. Now it's, you do your social media, then you pick up the phone and you have your schedule calls, then you get the business. Like it just, it just seems like things just get, you know, they have a little bit more steps added to it. That's my, that's my perspective on it. So what was, um, let's get back to Brad. What was his third question? Um, okay, so there's so much out there uh, to start with lead generation. You know, there's social media, there's doors, there's calls, you know, all the different Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, everything else that's out there that they can do twitter you know what should you be what should he be spending his time on and how much of each proportion so matt if you were brad and you're new in the business you where would you spend your time if i was new in the business i would spend my time i would focus on depends on whether i'm from the area or not if i have a sphere i would focus on two things sphere and open houses sphere and open would, houses no yeah I would do exactly what Jeff Cohn did, which is to make it my mission to take somebody out for coffee probably three to four times a week. I would really work the sphere and I would work, I would go to one of the top teams. If, if the open houses weren't enough, you know, doing an open house like 
twice a weekend or something like that, if that wasn't generating me enough like immediate leads, then the next thing I would do is step up the the outreach and I would go to a top team and I would offer to partner with them for a split in exchange mm-hmm. for following up on some of their leads. And we'll talk, I don't want to give it away because we're putting all this right. stuff together into, into the training course. It's called Get Now Business. Um, so we have some specific strategies for the types of, of leads that you could offer to follow up on from other agents and effectively steal some of their best leads because they don't, they're so clueless that they don't know what their best leads are. And you can come along and, uh, and effectively uh, piggyback off of their wasted money that they spent on generating leads that they never followed up on and uh, come close to deals. Yeah, no, so absolutely. I so I, what I would do is something that you and I have all talked about a lot, Matt, is high tech and high touch, blending them together. So this is back to Ronnie, pimps to you. You know, he is infused into my brain, you know, that, you know, when you're out and about, and I always talk about this, social media is done in chapters like a book. So if you're going to do Snapchat, every single thing you do throughout the day are broken up into chapters. So, Matt, you were doing something prior to the podcast. That was a chapter of your day. Now you're doing the podcast. That's the next chapter. So when you get off the phone call, it's going to be the next chapter. So if you can document that, um, then I would highly recommend, if that's part of your personality, highly recommend doing that. The millennials are going to live, are living in the Snapchat world. They're eventually going to come into the Instagram and the Facebook. Begrudgingly, they're begrudgingly yeah. they're going to do it, but they're going to do it because you know Facebook is going to be that's for more business. The average age in Facebook is 45 to 56 is kind of the, the medium age that's growing the fastest in Facebook right now. Um, and I would say Facebook absolutely. Matt, would you agree? Yeah, 100 percent. Snapchat, if you want, it depends on how old you are. And Brad, I don't know how old you are, but if you know if you're within that range of a millennial, I would absolutely be doing that. And then Instagram, this is what I do with Instagram, man. When I'm taking photos of stuff, and I just take photos, and then I can upload photos into Instagram. I don't have to take them with the Instagram app. That's what I do to add it to my story and just to kind of you know put the filters on and have some fun with it there. Especially if you're looking at nice houses or it's a nice kitchen, just and start seeing what you like to blend, but always get out and do belly to belly, face to face, always be there with another human being. That's that's the number one thing. You have to get out and network. And if you want business, right? If you want to get real business, man, if you're if you don't know what to do, go hand out oh, fuck it. Uh, this thing's called a business card, okay? They're very cool. Go hand out twenty of them a day. If you want to do really get crazy, get like twenty five a day. If you if you just want to get out there, just hand out ten a day to anything that has two legs or doesn't even have to have two legs. If just a human being that's breathing, you know, get out there and hand them a business card and say, hey, if I can ever be any value or assistance to you, here's my card. They'll probably throw it away, but if you hand out, it's a numbers game. Eventually, you're gonna find someone that wants to do something. I mean, okay. that'd be my that'd be my go. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Um. I think this is a question that's directed at us. TJ says, a few REU podcasts ago, Greg mentioned a site that had a list of upgrades for a home and potential ROI for the seller. Does anyone have that or anything like it? Does that sound familiar, Greg? Yes, hold on. Uh, here it is. And it's called Cost Versus Value. It's, it's off of remodeling. Uh, here it is. I'll put it in. A link now you guys can skip ad on the top here I'm gonna show Matt I'm gonna go into a screen share again so I can show everyone on um, iTunes I'm sorry god damn it where's this thing there it is okay so here it is guys the, I'm gonna put this link in here um, for you so don't worry about it but when you get up here you go to the year and then you select the region so you can see the different regions light up as I move it across the country and so you can go select the region here, and then it'll it'll be particular to your area. So it won't be just like you know West Coast, East Coast. It's and you can even get down to this down to the city. So um, very very cool stuff, and very awesome. I take this all the time to listing presentations, and I say and I'll highlight the ones that might be applicable to them. Every and the only ones that I really highlight are the ones that are going to be talking about the fact that. Um, uh, when they get like even or above what they're going to put in versus what they're going to get out and help them highlight and understand other things that may or may not be the best place to spend money in regards to, you know, fixing up a house. Yeah. Okay. 
Cool. And, and Adam, Adam brought up a great comment that I wanted to point out to everybody and go deeper on this a little bit. He says, pick less and go deep on it. Do less and do it better. Don't try to do everything because you won't be excellent at any of it. And it reminded me of something that a guy said on an interview earlier today. This is for the Team Building Podcast with Jeff Cohn. And uh, we had a guest on there that uh, it's an ISA coach. So he's worked with some of the top teams, you know, guys that sell everything from 200 homes a year to 1,200 homes a year. And I, you did hear that correctly, 1,200 uh -huh. homes a year. No, so he's worked with a lot of the top teams, especially in Canada. But point being, he said for all of the top teams, like these guys that are selling 500 or 1,000 homes a year, you think they have all these sorts of lead sources? He's like, no, they have three to four. Three mm -hmm. to four places where their leads come in. He's like, if you talk to the average agent or the person that comes in and they're doing like 50 deals a year, he's like, they're doing this and they're doing this and they're doing that and they're doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And he says, and then every time you talk to them, they're on to something else. Mentally, they're trying something new. They're on to this. They're experimenting with that. And it's, it's literally every time you talk to them, it's something new. He said, when you talk to the guys that are doing a thousand deals a month, or a thousand deals a year, I should say. They they are they're not usually experimenting with something new. They're going deeper and deeper on the stuff that they're already good at, um, and that's I have to keep that in mind. Like I'm looking at my calendar right now, going, okay, what have I committed to? What have I said yes to? What am I trying to do that I don't need to do? Um, fortunately, Greg, that does not extend to the podcast, by the way. Yes. Um, I continue to say yes uh, to the podcast because <laughs> I love it. But anyway, uh, but but I have been spending a lot of time. I don't know about, about you, but as my schedule has gotten busier, what's happened is that I've realized that what I really did was I overcommitted myself and I said yes to too many things. And mm -hmm. I had a little bit of that shiny object syndrome that I make fun of for you, Greg. With, uh, <laughs> you have it for social media and I have it for business opportunities. So I was telling I was telling Aaron Wittenstein the other, this the other day. I said at one point towards the end, late last year, I was involved in five different startup businesses. Yeah, you were, and you were stressed, dude. You were yes. just like pulling your hair out, and you're just like, I don't know what to freaking do. And I'm like, well, Johnson, what do you like to do? I don't like this one. I don't like this one. This one's stressing me out. I'm like, dump them. Yeah. Walk away. I mean, you get your time and your knowledge. If you don't have your time, is the most precious precious asset. If you use it and squander it in, in bad places or bad organizations or bad opportunities, then you're saying no to other opportunities. Maybe the other opportunity could be just reading a book on a bench, you know, listening to the birds chirp on a Wednesday afternoon. As Jeff Cohn, uh, not Jeff, as Frank from Viral would say, it's his thinking time. Like three hours in the fucking afternoon. <laughs> That's right. Well, block. to be fair to him, it's also his workout time. That's just just to throw that out there. But uh, Chase says, uh, speaking of Jeff Cohn, uh, check out his hangout with Matt and Greg on Circle Prospecting. It's a killer script. Absolutely. Jeff Cohn's episode of this show is one of our high, you know, like highest rated episodes and always had has been. Uh, I think it's called prospecting scripts and systems to sell 500 homes a year. Um, so guys, go look that up on our YouTube channel. And then uh, Adam also says, hey, Matt, have you read Essentialism? It speaks a lot about this subject. And not only that, Adam, but Greg, I don't know if you recall, but we had Matt Aitchison, the host of Millionaire Mindcast on uh, the Pursuing Results podcast last year. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you go to my Pursuing Results uh, YouTube channel, you can find an interview that we did with Matt Aitchison all about Essentialism, uh, the book by Greg McCune. Um, so I am 100% on board with that whole concept. Um, I'm trying to do that right now, doing less, doing it better, and having 100% zeroed in focus on building just a couple of doing doing things that really fit within my wheelhouse. And Greg, we've been talking a lot about this lately as as cold calling and as cold prospecting kind of, I don't know about dies out because phone calls will always be there, but this this whole thing about cold call prospecting is, is it has a time horizon on it. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. It really so does. You're, you know, you've been thinking a lot about, you know, how do you transition your own business and what, what are you good at? What do you enjoy doing? And, and you're experimenting with, different things to kind of get ready for that transition and, and trying to find those things that are within your wheelhouse. Yeah, I really am. You know, a lot of the, what's in my wheelhouse is, is this thing. Just think of a video camera in front of us. You know, it's, it's something that's easy for you and me. You and I enjoy being on camera. A lot of people may say this is their kryptonite, but I mean, I'm, I, well, where is it? Do I have it? I think I do. Um, so Amy B, she gave the, I keep on talking. If you go to amyb.com forward slash REU, guys, you guys can download the 75 ways to use video in your business. And I am, I'm trying to do more and more video in everything that I do so that I can be more and more of a face out there. And so it, the more that I can be recognized just by 
people seeing me. I'm doing my job more effectively. So that's one thing. Um, also, I'm I'm leveraging my time more and more. So like I instead of doing all the the fizzbos and expired calls, I have my boy Jonathan over at Talon Prospecting, dude. He's he's crushing them out. He has like 80 uh, nurtures that he's nurturing right now, and he's starting. To, they're starting to want to sell in the spring, so they're starting to come out, you know, out of their shells and want to have us come over and talk to them. Um, and then I hired Gene Velpe. Uh, to go and do my social media, which we're launching here just in a, in a like a day or something. I think we might be launching tonight or tomorrow as of this recording on the 4th, 5th of uh, April. Uh, yeah, April. <clears throat> so, like all the leads that Gene's going to you know, j- develop for me with our, our call to actions and our online stuff, they're going to go directly to Jonathan up at Talon. Jonathan is then going to nurture or set appointments with those leads. Then he's just going to set the appointments for me. So all I do is go on the appointments. And so I'm, I'm outsourcing the, 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 the lead gen part of it so that the people that are really good at doing this can go do what they're really good at. And I can go meet with the people, the team can go meet with the people and do what we're really good at. So I think that, I think, I mean, there's something that's coming down the pipe, guys. I, Matt, we can't talk about what we talked about off air. Right. But guys, there is something that is going to be a potential industry shifter, changer, completely changing the way real estate has been done in the past. And you're probably looking at me going, Fuck you, Greg. There's no way you can do that. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. And I know what it is. <laughs> but um, we can't tell you. Sorry. But Thanks, I, we can't tell you. But I, I, I will. I, I have about 90. I have about 60 days until it's going to be more of a uh, an opportunity, and it won't be sold right. to agents. It'll be sold to larger organizations only. But it is. It is the 8,000 pound gorilla. I mean, it is. It is the thing that it's going to take someone from zero to hero in a very short amount of time. It's it's incredible, Matt. It's incredible. But um, no more on that since we can't say any more and we're getting everybody Yeah, popular. well, and here and here's what won't go away. And and that that pro, that that sort of game-changing thing will help you with this in terms of knowing kind of who to build relationships with. But here's what won't go away, which is what we talked about with Frank a couple episodes ago on on building your your database. So the thing that will never go away, as long as there's as long as there is anything called a real estate agent industry where you have people who help people move from one home to another, which I think will always exist in some mm-hmm. form or another. You will always have the the relationship with the homeowners. So the whole the whole thing about this is that the old way was to just go out into the wide world and you find the people that needed what you had to sell and then you try to get them to know you like you trust you in a very short period of time so at the point where they would say yes. <clears throat> and if they didn't say yes right now, fuck them. I hate them. They're horrible. I don't want to ever see them or talk to them again and on to the next person. Yeah. Well, all that has changed. Like you can't do that anymore within the age of social media and stuff that we live in. So now the approach is you go to a predetermined, pre-selected group of people that you know are going to have a need for your service at some point, and you build the relationships with them in advance, right? right? So if you're a real estate agent, that's the homeowner. You build the relationship with the homeowner, and then over time, they will pop up their hand and say, hey, I need the services of a real estate agent. And hopefully you're the person that's been keeping in touch with them and building relationships to where you're the one that comes to mind. So the whole, like the whole cycle, the whole approach to selling yourself as a real estate agent has really shifted. Um, and the people that get a hold of that are they going to be the ones that are successful. Now, if they add something like what, what you're talking about, Greg, which we can't get, give the particulars, but any type of lead generation or conversion or whatever, has to be done in the right context of understanding that. It's all about the relationships that you have with a predetermined, pre-selected, targeted group of the right people that you want to work with, that you know are, are going to have a need for what you have to sell at some point in the near future. Yeah, 100%. Right now, we've been doing it the traditional way. Um, sorry, guys, got a call, getting a call from my buddy. Weird thing. That's my boy, Sean Smith, man. I, I was just thinking about him this morning. All of a sudden, he's calling me. Anyways, when it comes to lead gen, um, you know, it it, it be consistently there is what I would highly recommend in all different facets. Brad, that goes back to the whole whole idea of high tech, high touch, how to be in front of people at all times. Um, Like one of the guys, you know, his link, his name is Lincoln. Uh, I've been following up with him for like a year plus. Dude, he wrote me an email yesterday and going, hey, dude, no matter what, you have my business guaranteed. That's like a $1.2 million you know, home, $1.1, $1.2 million home that he's, you know, he just guaranteed me because I, I gave value. I followed up and I, I was persistent and consistent, not pushy, but I was always there, ready to go when he was ready to go. 
So with that being said, is that you've got to go and you got to find, you know, the people that are leads and then give them what they need and then be there when, the, when they're ready to make the decision. It's as simple as that for right now. But, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about the other thing later. Okay. All right. So there's a really good question that uh, as we start to uh, to come to the end of things, by the way, guys, make sure to uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook and all, all that good stuff and get somebody asked like how they can sign up for our products and stuff like that. We don't have a bunch of different products. We have one class right now that's available and it's about how to go into the neighborhoods, call them while you still can build mm. that email database of homeowners in the neighborhoods that you want to work with. I mean, now is the time to jump on this before called cold calling goes away and becomes outlawed or something like that. Um, so go to rockstarprospecting.com. That way you can get out there and start talking to the, the owners of these homes that live in the neighborhoods that you want to work in and start building the relationships now. You will pick up now business in the process of that, but more importantly, you'll build your database for the future. So that's rockstarprospecting.com. But I want to take this question from Flo. It's in regards to FISBOs, but it's a good it's a good overall question because it uh, it talks about um, you know how to handle yourself on the phone. So she says, mm -hmm. when you call them, do you answer every question on the phone before trying to get the appointment? I mean, like, like what, what the market's doing, the pricing, mm -hmm. you know, everything yeah, the, else. The questions and objections that come up from a FISBO, do you address them and try to answer every question on the phone? Or do you divert and you say something like, well, that's something that's best handled at the appointment. You try to sell them on the, on the appointment. All right. Do right. you an answer every question and effectively try to sell them on working with you over the phone, or do you just try to sell them on the appointment and then address those objections in person? So, you want to, I mean, my, this is my personal take on it, okay? Um, but what I would say is that address enough to, to get them enticed to have you come over as knowing what you're talking about. If you, if you give them everything, there's really no reason for them to have you over except for to look at the house. And if, you know, if you've given them everything, now they can go back to their real estate agent and be like, hey, this is what happened. This is what I was told. Or go to their cousin who's going to be selling real estate or whatever else. You know, answer, answer, answer. you know, maybe 50% and then say, you know what, why don't we do this? Let's get together. I know that there's going to be a lot more questions that might come up between the now and the time that we get to meet. You know, start writing them down because I want to answer all of them for you when we're sitting down, you know, at, around the kitchen table and we can talk for a little bit. What, you know, what, give me a couple of days and times it might work best for you for me to come on out. You see that? That's my personal mm -hmm. way that I would go about it. But you're also asking asking someone that fucking sucks at Fizbo's. So I don't really, <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I believe that, but I, I do think you're right in the sense that you have to establish credibility somehow. And one of the best ways you can do that is when somebody a to asks you a question to give a genuine and informed response. But I do agree, you don't give away the farm, uh, don't talk commission, do not talk price, don't do not talk upgrades, do not talk about you know what you think you can get them. I mean, somebody put, posted a screenshot uh, of themselves texting back and forth with the homeowner of a home they haven't seen in person, telling them, well, I think I can get you more than X uh, on that home. What? No, none no. of that. Absolutely no. not. Stupid. Uh, the big, big, big. Big mistake. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, I, I love Aaron's approach, Aaron Wittenstein, um, which is, for the most part, you you redirect, you reaffirm, and then you redirect. You're like, yeah, I can totally appreciate that. You know, boy, that make our jobs a lot easier. But let me ask you this. You know, reaffirm, redirect. Uh, but I do think there's value, Greg, like you said, and and you have to give them enough to establish your own credibility. And sometimes yeah. that comes from answering your question. And sometimes that comes from just making the statement like, you know, hey, like this is what we do. Like we've been in the neighborhood for 30 years and our team has been selling homes in your price range in these neighborhoods. Um, mm -hmm. For the last 30 years, we've been privileged to help, you know, hundreds of families, but we have, you know, but still deliver very, very personalized service and then move on and ask them a question, right? So that establishes your credibility. Oh, so there's a, there's a mix, but you always want to, I mean, the point, to me, the point of a phone call is not to sell them on working with you. It is to sell the appointment, but you, so all you need is just enough credibility to where they're willing to meet with you. Yeah. Just get in the damn door guys. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, your, 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 your speech pattern had better slow down. You better be more concerned about their interest, their timing. I mean, that's what you need to do. Cause if you're all like, Oh my God, Matt, let, 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 let's meet. Yeah. I'll answer everything for you. Dude, that's like a, that's, that's commission breath on steroids right there. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be confident in what you talk about and your and your demeanor needs to come across that way. But Yeah, and I think there's a marketing answer to this too, which is you can tell them uh, there's a couple of options. So let, let's say they ask, you know, like what would you do differently to market my home? So, right, you're talking to a FISBO or an expired or, or just somebody that's sharp and wants to know what's the difference between you and every other agent. Um, it's it's very good to have kind of a marketing type of answer, like a like a five-second pitch, which is, you know, look, 
not every agent is the same. I do what every other real estate agent does. Plus, I do five very specific things that most other or all other agents will not do to get homes sold. And I would love to show you what all those are. Uh, if we meet in person, or I can send you some information on my evidences of success, and I can I can send my marketing plan over to you by email. That way you can take a look at it. But really the best way for me to explain that and share that is in person after I've taken a look at the home and seen if we're even a good fit to work together. But at least then you have, like just in that response, they know, okay, at least this person feels like they do things that are different from the competition. You don't, you're don't, you not thrown by that question. Like so many agents I feel like are deer in the headlights when somebody asks them what makes you different. And all they yeah. can come up with is, uh, I work harder and I'm more, I'm overflowing with integrity. Like it just oozes, <laughs> integrity oozes from my pores. Uh, well, that, that means that if you have to say it, it obviously doesn't. I mean, <laughs> that's a Jenny Williams quote. That's right. If, yes, you have to say, if you have to say you have integrity, then uh, then you probably don't. All right. <laughs> so this, this is a good question from Adam Wallace. Uh, I love this question. So do you think that farming the old school traditional way of door knocking and mailers and using Facebook to target them will be what makes you survive in the long term? Uh, I think tech, I think uh, AI, uh, artificial intelligence is going to be a huge thing in, in the in the future and survival. I think that, yeah. you know, a, um, you know, goggles, you know, what, uh, AV, you know, artificial, um, anyway, augmented reality, uh, AR, yeah, AR, you know, AR is going to be huge when you can literally like blink your eyes and move through a house and look around like as if you were truly there. I think that's going to be a big thing. So if you can get ahead of that curve and be able to start showing yourself as a little bit different and in 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 ahead of the ahead of the game. Um, Always being in a community, you know, and being around the people that are truly trying to sell and trying to make a relationship with. Yes, those are always going to be there. Mailers, if you have, if you're going to do mailers, you got to do smart mailers. Okay, you know, every door direct is a great way for you guys to do it if you're on a budget. But if you have, if you want to have the ability to track and watch what people are doing in a very non-stalker way, go to, you know, corefact.com. They have a specific code for every property that encourages them to encourages people to go back to a site which is not yours. Enter in this code, and then they get a range of value, low to high, with two different sliders for market and condition of property, and they automatically select five properties. It could be comps. Now, you can the homeowner can go and select or deselect as many comps as they want. The range changes here, you know, what the value is, and they get they don't get a specific number, but you know every time when they log, Matt and Julie log in, I get notified if they, if I send them the card, right? And if they have a, you know, five stars, if they it's a one star, man, not too active. They got like a two or three stars. They got three stars, man. I'm I'm go, I'm going to your house. With, hey, hello, what's up? In the neighborhood, want to pop on by, because there's some activity taking there. You know, the activity mm -hmm. being given there, it's indicating that there might be something, you know, about ready to happen. Get your ass over, make yourself known, be a friendly resource, bring some sort of value add information or content over to those people. That's why mm -hmm. door knocking, that's the high tech and the high touch blend right there. Yeah. And then also using like, uh, not, you know, you can talk about neighborhood scout, you can talk about, uh, 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 God damn it, what's the other one I like so much? Home snap? Uh, no. Real well, no. Time? Yeah. Yeah, neighborhood scout guys. Sorry, okay. yeah, neighborhood scout. Go there and then recite some valuable information in regards to the neighborhoods and what's going on and about the network demographics and the pricing and stuff like that. So can high tech, high touch. But I mean, belly to belly, always gonna, always in my humble opinion, gonna be there because people still need to trust yeah. other people. Yeah, and I think it uh, it comes down to I think it's going to be a combination of using high touch community events, neighborhood events, and stuff like that. Uh, to per to meet people in person, and that may take the place of door knocking if it becomes less culturally acceptable to go up and knock on someone's door. So let's say it just gets really bad. Nobody trusts anybody that comes to the door. Girl Scouts go out of business. Like the whole thing collapses, and nobody like there's bars on the windows everywhere, and nobody comes to the door anymore. There will still be places where you congregate based around you being neighbors or close community, you know, uh, friends with people that are in close proximity to you. So you, you can still get access to those people to meet them in person somehow, even if they won't ever come to the door to, uh, to talk to you. And then from there, I think it's a, like you talked about, Greg, it's, a, it's an issue of getting them into a place where you can communicate with them and they can interact with you. And all of it takes place online in the cloud. And then you have a system on the back end that tracks how much they interact with the content that you're putting out there. Mm -hmm. It's called marketing signals in the business world. So it's, it's all these, it's tracking all these little signals from all the content, all the places that you have where people can interact with you uh, at, before it all took place offline. 
somebody would get a mailer, somebody would get a phone call from you, somebody would see your brand on a bus bench, and you had no feedback to any specific person when they were interacting with you, you had no signals. Well, now it's all online, it's all in the cloud, so now we have signals. Well, you can monitor those signals, and there will be there. There's already software in the business world that does this, and it's coming to real estate. We already have it in the form of things like Infusionsoft, uh, but all it can respond to is like emails and a little bit of social media. But it's going to get to the point where anytime anybody interacts with your content, or the stuff that you put out there, or the resources that you have for them, it will know, and the software will gather that information and rank the people according to how interested they are. But then at that point, here's the problem for most agents. What do you do at that point with that information? You can't just send an email. You can't just send a Facebook message. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to by. be able, you got to send them a video. You got to stop by. You got to pick up the phone and call them. Like there has to be, like it has to move up those levels of communication. You can't stay down at that bottom level of the pyramid if you've ever read seven levels of communication. True. You can't stay down at the bottom level of the pyramid and expect it to turn into clients. Like that's not how people work. No, it's not going to happen at all. But people, agents don't understand that they, they, a lot of agents that are either new or getting back into this thing, you know, their customers and new agents think it's going to be like HGTV. Wake the fuck up. It's not like HGTV. It is a hard, meat grinding, bone crushing industry. It takes a lot of hard work and it takes you getting out of your comfort zone. We've talked about being in your comfort zone, which is where you're either, you know, staying the same or going backwards because you're comfortable and you're not pushing yourself. You have your stress zone. Then you have your stretch zone. And if you move into a, an area that you've never done before, let's say you're going to do door knocking or you're going to do cold calls, you're going to go, go out and meet me or an agoraphobia, agoraphobia, phobia. agoraphobic, 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 like Matt, and he never leaves his house, you know, and Matt's <laughs> going to go to a, uh, a networking event. Um, yeah, that's your stress zone when you do something you've never done before. But if you do that more often, it gets, it's going to get you into your stretch zone, your stretch zone is where you want to live. You always want to be pushing yourself just a little bit more out of what you typically do. Don't live in just a life of complete or you know, repetitive actions time after time after time. A book called Unwitting the Devil uh, by Napoleon oh, Hill. Outwitting the, the Devil. Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Amazing. Absolutely 1,000% amazing and i am learning a ton and it makes such logical sense this book was written 70 years ago guys and yeah. it is just true it just as true now as it was then go read that book it is absolutely epic and you'll understand what i'm talking about what Matt, what was the what was the thing that the devil was saying to napoleon when he was doing the interview about uh hypnotic um rhythm hypnotic rhythm you know when you drive to work and you forget how you got to work mm -hmm. you know when you do the same damn thing you know, start looking at your life and figure out how you can break it up and do something different. Because when you do something different, you're going to meet new people. When you meet new people, you have new opportunities. Mm -hmm. See how that works. Really kind of good like that. Yeah, it's funny. One of the things that, based on that book, one of the things I've been doing with my um, with my team members on the podcasting business is uh, is I started doing this this week, which is I asked them what what did you feel like you did well last week, and what would you like to do better this week? And you'd be shocked how much that throws off people. You know, I was never thought about it. You know, I was actually asked that question by my friend, Lily. Mm -hmm. She now become, she's more, it's like, I started out coaching her and now she's coaching me on stuff. Really? Yeah. She, she asked me a great question. She's like, Greg, Greg, give me five things that you did well this week and five things that you'd like to do better next week. And I'm like, fuck. Damn. Uh, that's a lot. Let's start with one thing. I'm like, I don't know. Uh, but I, but it, was, it got me thinking because I've never been asked questions like that. People forget that I do so much coaching, you do so much coaching, that we need to be coached at times too. We need to get our brains moving. And so, Lily, knuckles to you, girlfriend. Uh, I really appreciated that, and I've been telling a lot of people about it because it really does get your brain moving. And she actually gets coached by Gina Bafari, the head of Berkshire Hathaway, uh, their okay. friend. So she's getting some high-level high level, high level uh, coaching over there, which is really yeah. helping. And you business. know Gina, right? Yeah, no, Gino, absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, when right. I told her when I told her that, I'm like, she probably thought I was full of shit. I'm like, ah, oh, dude, I know Gino for sure, man. Just tell him about Greg McDaniel. He is talking mm -hmm. to you. She, she talked to him on Saturday, well, well, however long ago. She's like, yeah, I met this guy named Greg McDaniel. Do you know him? He's like, oh yeah. Oh, tell Greg hi. Tell his mom and pop. His pops and his mom hello as well. They're great. And she's like, okay, yeah. the guy's legit. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and it just guys, so just so that you guys know, I mean, it's it, as far as coaching and stuff. Uh, I have a relationship with a guy that's been on the show here before, Pasquale Scopoliti, uh, who is kind of oh, my, I would consider him like my strategic advisor. And number one, he's the one that recommended the book Outwitting the Devil to me. 
So he's an amazing, just a freaking wealth of information. This is a guy who moved to Mexico and brought the largest collection of books that has ever crossed the border, 10,000 plus books. Seriously? It, yeah, yeah, and then brought it back <laughs> across when he moved back a years later. Anyway, point being, uh, so what part of part of the the process of working with him is is what he calls the the registration of decisions, which is that you have this. You're talking about like hypnotic rhythm, right? So you get into this unbreakable rhythm of every week. I write him an email on Sunday that tells him what is my mission for this upcoming week and what is the feedback of my mission for that previous week and did I hit it? And if not, explain the agony of defeat and if I hit it, explain the thrill of victory, right? So the mm. thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, he's very big on that and really feeling in, in your body and in your emotions when you hit your goal and when you don't so that you like start to physiologically condition yourself so that you are mentally and physically willing to do whatever it takes to hit your mission to avoid feeling that pain, that agony of defeat again. And most people, including myself, I, I'm so focused on systems and rituals and routines and just I set my goal and then I figure out kind of that ritualistic day in, day out, methodical, just if I just do this every day, I'll hit it. I'm so focused on that that I, I kind of let myself off the hook for mm. feeling the the agony of when I don't hit my goals. I just figure, well, I, my system wasn't right. Let's adjust the system and move on. But Pasquale is really good at that. Like, uh, And it comes from, from that book and, and a lot of other research that he's done. We as human beings, we need that. We And the whole point of Outwitting the Devil, Napoleon Hill's book, is definite purpose. Definite purpose, definite purpose, definite purpose. If you can do it every day, great, but start with a week. Have a definite purpose for the week. So I have a definite purpose for this week. I had a definite purpose for last week. I'll have a definite purpose for the week after next, and I'll be able to email it to him every Sunday and tell him exactly whether I hit it for the previous week and how it felt based on whether I hit it or not, and then I'll have one for the, for the, the following week. So I don't know if that helps anybody. It's definitely helped me a lot. Uh, Chad Boyle says no drifting. Thank you, Chad. That is the point of outwitting the devil. No drifting. No Absolutely. drifting. No drifting. Yeah, and in, in in when you get when you realize what we're talking about, when you guys read the book, you're gonna sit there and be like, holy shit, I've been a drifter for a long, a lot of my life. You yeah. know, in, not not being an independent yeah. thinker. You know, it gets down to such nitty gritty stuff. You're like, I'm sitting there going, I've been a drifter for a while. You know, in some areas, I haven't been a drifter in other areas. Mm -hmm. um, but the number one thing, guys, that you can learn right now without reading the book, be an independent thinker. Think for yourself. Do not listen to your parents, your friends, your family members, your boss. You don't have a boss if you're listening to this. Your broker, your other agents, fuck them all, okay? You think for your own way of life, what you want, how you want it, and then build a plan to get there and be definite. And then this is the other one, be definite on what that is. And I know that's kind of well, a lot of people are like, oh my God, fuck my parents. Why would I do that? It's because they're not you. They have the ability to indoctrinate you with their thinking, not your thinking. My parents are very great. I love my parents. He's the grandmaster, right? They're very, very religious. I'm not. And I was for a while because I listened to them. Now, I'm not saying religion is bad. I'm not saying that. This is an example of a, you know, a way that I was indoctrinated on a certain subject matter and how I have been able to think for myself. I still, my parents and I still love each other. We get along great. You know, there's nothing has changed. I just don't think the same way they, they do. So what's something that is hindering you, stopping you, blocking you, that you've been thinking in a certain way because of a certain certain other person in your life? Yeah. Start taking control of that. Have definite definiteness of purpose and think for yourself. That should be your takeaway from this video. Yeah. 100%. Guys, and your other takeaway should be to stop immediately what you're doing and follow both of us on Facebook. Do stop! not find us. That's right. In the name of podcast. All right. <laughs> I was going to say, love, that's just too weird. Follow both of us on Facebook. Subscribe to the show on YouTube, iTunes, or Stitcher. And, guys, if you're if you're enjoying it, um, a lot of people ask you, well, like, when they get done with the McDaniel Challenge and, and just when you answer questions and when we answer questions on the group and all this stuff, they ask us, like, how to thank us. The best way, guys, probably go leave a review on iTunes. Mm -hmm. um, the more, the better on that. That helps other people find the show, and that's what we get a kick of out of. I was just talking to Greg about this before we, we started, you know, broadcasting is we don't make, like, this is not where we make our money. You guys know we don't push a bunch of products. We don't shove a bunch of stuff down your throat. We're not constantly trying to sell you tickets to an event. Um, it's always going to be like that. We never intend this to be like this cash cow thing. We've never put ads into promoting the show. Um, we've we've just, that's not how we've done things. The, the show has grown organically. 
We had almost 60,000 downloads um, on the audio side alone in January, so the show continues to just grow. And in fact, it doubled here not that long ago. Uh, I, sh I sent the stats over to uh, Chris Lockhead to be an encouragement for them. And he's like, what the hell happened between this, this month and that month that caused you to double? And I'm like, Right. No idea. Just keep plugging away. Um, and the same goes for you guys. Whatever content that you're putting out there, uh, keep doing it. It took us a long time. I mean, in in a year ago today, we had as many downloads for the entire month as we do now in the first five days of this month. Yeah. Like that's how far we've come just in the last year, thanks to you guys finding us on YouTube, finding us on iTunes or whatever, telling your friends about it. So we really appreciate all of you guys that uh, that enjoy the show, share the show. And, and Colton, in, uh, in response to you, Zero fucks were given today. We give <laughs> not a single fuck. Zero fucks. That's Every day is lived below zero fuck level. Well, Greg says a lot. I but when, when, when encouraged and under the right circumstances, under the, under the, uh, under the encouragement of uh, Starbucks espresso, I may occasionally say fuck. Hey, and by the way, Matt, I have to tell you right now, right? My, my buttons are just bursting off in pride for you because you have said fuck, I think, four times on this show, man. <laughs> Look at the big boy fans you're putting Because at one point my mom started watching the, uh, the podcast. <laughs> She's like, oh, this is, Sorry, this, this is my little boy, Matthew. You're like, that's right. It's like, I, I can just picture everybody huddled around the laptop in Omaha, Nebraska, and then just be a collective. <gasps> <laughs> we know the McDaniel does it, but the Johnson? Exactly. Oh, the McDaniel is corrupting him from the inside. It's the California yeah, life. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>, bullshit. <laughs> Oh, my God, you guys are freaking amazing people. Yeah, uh, and that, like Matt said, dude, we do it for you guys. We absolutely love you and adore you, without a doubt. I love interacting with you guys. I love hearing your success stories. Our uh, our uh, producer, who we hired on full-time, is the second pin I've dropped, damn it. Um, <laughs> uh, she's going to be reaching out to everybody who's taking the McDaniel Challenge, uh, just so the, those of you that have done it so far. And we're going to be putting to get together panel shows maybe once a month about where you guys were, after, you know, after, before the show, after the, you know, McDaniel challenge, where you are today, you know, what, what has been helpful, what kind of, you know, just the kind of the antics we do on these different crazy things that we do on the McDaniel challenge. So if you guys get a call, it's okay. It's just, you know, our, our, our producer looking out, looking to reach out to you guys. So follow me on Facebook, follow Matt on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, which is McDaniel Callahan dot real estate and uh, Snapchat is R E U four, four, four. That's my snap, Matt, go. That's right. Guys, go to rockstarprospecting.com. Speaking of interacting and engaging, we want to actually see you guys. So these are the classes that we're doing. This is the last run of Rockstar, Pros of Rockstar Prospecting <laughs> before we launch our next four-week long training course, which will be Get Now Business. Uh, so somebody asked the other day, like, how to register for the courses. Get Now Business is not yet ready for release or for sign up. So guys, right now it's rockstarprospecting.com. Go there. Uh, the money that we make from that effectively pays for our producer to help the show run smoothly. So like I said, guys, this is not a cash cow for us, but we, we love to do things where we get to interact with you directly. And we really want to get hands on and be able to help you guys uh, in like in a group setting where we can do role play and we can hear the phrasing and the tonality because that's where we can really dig in and help and, and help you get some of those repetitions that actually build your skills. So that's mm -hmm. what Rockstar Prospecting is all about, is how to have the conversations with the people that live in the neighborhoods that you want to work, where you can build your database, pick up some now business from people that are ready to go now, and build up your list of people to keep in touch with for the future. Rockstarprospecting.com, um, that's all I got to say on that. That is the last run of this particular class. Yep, and Colton, we will reach, we'll have our producer reach out. We'll get you on the show ASAP, and me, amigo. All right, guys. Until uh, next time, uh, peace out, ninjas. We got.